If you think all modern worship music sounds the same, I'd probably tell you that you haven't been paying very much attention. Need me to prove it to you? Stick around, watch the video, and wait to hate in the comments until after we're finished. Today we're going to break down some of the big concepts and common sounds from Cody Karn's latest live album, Firm Foundation. This album features some really interesting keys, piano, and synth parts. The parts aren't very hard to play, but there's tons of nuance and really cool textures throughout this entire album that I'm really excited to dive into. Now, I did a deep dive and studied some of the production and sound design behind this entire album so I can share with you the high-level insights. Now, at first listen, this album might just sound like another big wall of sound live worship album, but just underneath that wall of sound, I found some really interesting new ideas and inspiration that I want to share with you. In the end, I think this album comes down to two main things, piano and spice. So let's start off by talking about the pianos. I'm going to use the Sunday Keys app for all of the sounds you'll hear in this video. And make sure you watch through to the end because I will share a set list link and you can open it in the Sunday Keys app to immediately import this set list if you'd like to use these exact sounds. Let's talk about pianos a little bit. The piano sounds on this album, just as is trending in, in lots of modern worship right now, are very close, very intimate. There's lots of noise, sort of this urgency to it. So you've got lots of upright piano sounds and some felt piano sounds as well. And there's always a, a pretty good amount of compression on it as well. So you can contrast an upright piano like that with something big like this smashed grand piano. More often than not on this album, we're going to steer more towards the upright sound. Another example here, we'll use the SK upright and this room voicing. There's also a lot of felt piano on this album. The characteristic of a felt piano that is very, very specific is the sound of those felted hammers striking the string. So it's always mic'd very close. It's very breathy. It's soft. It feels very, very alive. Another thing I noticed a ton of when it comes to the pianos on this album is actually doubling up two different piano sounds, processing them differently, and then combining them together in the mix. So let's go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to take this felt piano, I've got this in the first sound module, and then we're going to add another piano. I'm going to go back to that SK upright so I can just search for it. Let's bring in the compressed variant. It's not just as simple as grabbing two different piano sounds, smashing them together and assuming that it's going to sound good. Most of the time that's going to be a little bit too busy, they're going to compete or even cancel each other out. So this is probably just sounds a little bit chorusy. But because they're both right up front in the mix, they're not really complementing each other. They're stepping on each other's toes. So what I often hear is one piano that's right in the foreground. Often that's the most articulate, the, the one with the most noise, the most note definition in the transients. And then underneath that will be a secondary piano, maybe something bigger or more, more full sounding with some warmth. So for me, I'm going to keep that felt piano up front and bring the upright piano down a bit. And then often what I'm hearing is some more modulation being applied, whether that's more reverb, some chorus. In this case, I think we could do with a little bit of chorus. So I'm going to make this a little bit more subtle. We'll go about there. So here's just the upright piano. Okay. And then the other thing that these layered pianos often have going for them is a rolled back tone. So they are a lot darker. There we go. And then the two combined. If we take that upright out, then we just lose some of that warmth and body. Layering two acoustic piano sounds is actually not a super traditional approach to take. It's something that definitely jumped out to me when I was studying the production of this album. And it's really easy to achieve this kind of sound in the Sunday Keys app. Now that we've talked about pianos, let's talk about spice. When I say spice, I just mean interesting stuff 
adding flavor, seasoning to the overall sound. I said that this album isn't just a wall of sound album. And I really mean that there's not just like, here's eight pads stacked on top of each other, like arena synth style stuff. There is a lot of really delicate synth programming on this album. There are tons and tons of layers. So the result is still kind of a traditional wall of sound. But I guess I'd have to say that the bricks that are building that wall of sound are more interesting. There's patterns on them. They are, you know, more varied, more diverse. And I think that's really, really cool because the end product, the end sound feels very familiar, feels inviting, uh, feels cohesive, but how you get there is where there's a lot of artistry. So let's first off talk about strings. There's a lot of these really airy sort of fragile string sounds. It's a great complement to the, the tone of these more fragile and more articulate pianos. And we can do this inside of Sunday Keys if we go to strings and orchestra and then strings, there's a series of instruments called the wispy violin inside of Sunday keys that capture this sort of very fragile vibe. Uh, this is what they sound like. And they come and go and they fade in and out. Here's another one called harmonics. This one's all air. And waves, this might be my favorite. Very slow, very evolving texture. Let's go ahead and add this Evo sound in. I'll bring the volume down just a little bit. So we've got piano and just our first little bit of spice. The next bit of spice I wanna talk about is noise. When you study the underlying sounds across this album, the synth sound specifically, there is a ton of noise. And I don't just mean sound. I mean like actual like noisy bits, like white noise, like rumblings, cracklings, hissing, air. These noisy sounds really, really add this sort of undercurrent of energy. They never poke out over in the top of the mix. They're always underneath, but it just gives the, the songs and the arrangements this extra bit of life and energy. And I think we can take those ideas that sort of permission to do noisy things if they're not standing out too much in the mix. And we can apply that to the patches we make for our own worship teams. So there's a couple sounds that I love in Sunday Keys for doing this sort of thing. The first is a pad called Radio Static, and I'll search for it by name. Here it is. Check this out. Bring the volume up so you can hear it. Here it is just on its own. And it's got these sort of metallic clangs in it, these staticky sounds. It's almost percussive, but it's also like arrhythmic. It's not happening at any specific time. And I really love that, just sitting underneath. Right there. Okay, so now we've got a noisy pad and the strings and together they're sort of providing the ambience. But let's add a little bit more aggressive noise. And I'm gonna do this with a lead sound. I'm also gonna search for this one by name. It's called dystopic lead. This one is crunchy, it is gnarly, it is nasally and resonant. If you just came across that sound inside of the browser and you didn't have any context for how you could use it, you might think, whoa, that is way over the top. There's no way I could ever actually find a home for that. But check this out. First, we're gonna set the layer range so that it ends here at this B flat, because we've been playing in B flat this whole time. So now it's only up in my right hand. Okay, I'm gonna bring the volume down a touch so that it's here. And then I'm also gonna open the settings and bring down the max amount for mod filter. This just limits how bright the sound can get as I move the mod wheel. So now, in the context of our mix, let's see if I can get this to feel good. So. And I'll bring up the brightness of these synths a little bit. that just a little bit. It's just underneath, it's sort of crackling there, and we don't want too much of it.
but picture in a full band context with drums and bass and the guitar. And it's just that little bit of extra crunchiness, that little bit of, of grunginess that, that pushes this into something that it would not be otherwise. And I, I think it's absolutely killer. One more kind of spice that I wanna talk about is what I'd call sparkle. And that doesn't just mean shimmer pad. I'm talking about all sorts of different things that just have this sort of bright character that stands out a little bit in the mix. So let me swipe over to the right in the app and we can add some more sounds to this patch. And remember, at the end of this video, I'll share a set list link with you so you can pull this into your Sunday Keys app and get this very patch. Okay, so let's find a couple different sparkly elements. I'm not just talking about bright pads, I'm talking about anything that stands out up in the top of the mix. So we could look to arps for this, maybe one of these right hand arps. I actually really love this one. I think that's it. I'm not gonna waste any time, I'm just gonna call it. I really love this texture. So now let's see what we've got going on here. We could open the reverb, wash it out a little bit more. And we could also adjust how bright it gets. Maybe we want it to get a little less bright. We also want it to be a little bit more consistent. So I'll adjust the minimum and max. So the mod will still adjust the brightness some, but not too much. Nice, right? It's there, but it's not like telling you this is a, a patch with an arpeggiator in it. It's almost functionally more of like a background texture. It's not a pad, but it's kind of doing the same sort of thing. And it's really, really unique to use these arpeggiated elements in this sort of way, but it is all over this record. So let's kind of do this one more time. We're gonna grab another arp. We're gonna put it in the right hand as well. Let's try this one here. It's really subtle. There we go. Nice. The last bit of sparkle that I want to add to this is it's it's kind of anti-sparkle, but with without it, you're really gonna be missing something in the end. I'm talking about a bass sound, but not just a bass sound that is like traditional and adding low end. I want something that actually has some some high-end frequency content. In fact, oftentimes a lot of high-end frequency content. These are often analog style synths, where you have that filter sort of opening up as the song grows dynamically, and that results in more perceived high end being filled. Um, so I've got this buzz bass with the mod wheel down. It's still rather prominent, so we could adjust this as well. We bring that filter way down. We almost end up with a sub bass. And as we bring the mod wheel up, then we get a nice bit of brightness. So now let's bring this all together. Here we are with the mod wheel down. And as the mod wheel's moved up, So now that we've got piano and tons of spice, we need to make this work for any live performance, any song. We can do this really easily by just programming a couple more snapshots. So to start off with, let's adjust this first snapshot 
and make it our kind of quiet, like starting the song snapshot. So I'm gonna bring everything down, especially these sort of extra layers. We wanna save those for when we're building. So with that, I'm gonna save, and we'll rename this snapshot down. Now I'm gonna select snapshot two, and we're gonna to start to build. So I'll bring the mod wheel up to about half, and I'm gonna bring in some of these layers. I'm gonna keep that lead sound mostly out for now, because I want some subtlety there, but a little bit of bass and some of these arps, and that's gonna feel nice. We'll save that snapshot and rename it as mid. Now we're gonna to go to snapshot three. This is gonna be our sort of all in moment. So I'm gonna increase the volume of these primary layers. We want that dystopic lead really to stand out in the mix now. Mod wheel is gonna go up. That increases the brightness of synths that are programmed to respond to it. We're gonna bring in that secondary right hand ARP and a good bit of the buzz bass as well. And we'll save that. So now we've got three different positions bringing in all of this extra spice centered around this core sort of piano sound. So here we go. Nice, you could underscore here, you could start a song. And then you can begin to build. So now I've got a single patch that sort of is my attempt to bottle up the inspiration that I got from listening to this new album. If you haven't checked out this album for yourself, you gotta go give it a listen, support the artist. There's an incredible production. We can't cover all of the nuance in a single video nor in a single patch, but we think this patch is a great representation of some of the big ideas. And now here's the best part. We're gonna put a shared set list link in the description so you can open this link in the Sunday Keys app. It'll pull down this patch so you can try it out for yourself. If you don't already have a Sunday Keys license, We'll put a link in the description to that too so you can learn more about this app.